These gloves are too small for my hand, but <laughs> I guess they're gonna work. So welcome back to the channel. And I'd like to say this is a product sponsored video. Thank you very much, Tom from CSI for sending me a box that contained the auto slick from Carbonics. So, as always, I like to test before I apply to the car, and this is a test panel that I painted and polished out. If you've been following the channel, you'll see that I've done a lot of polishing on this thing. Now it's time to put some auto slick on it. So let's see how it works. Here's what I noticed, uh, that these didn't get really crusty, okay? So, this is black, it's gonna show up scratches, but right now there's hardly any scratches on it at all. I'll show it to you so you can see. There's some, some scratching in there, not a big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse my pad, or my microfiber. And the other thing too is, these gloves I'm using, definitely, I won't be able to wash these gloves and reuse them because they're going to be coated. So let's just see how this stuff works. It's totally saturated. Now I didn't get any applicators in my kit, so I just got to go with what I got. how it turns out. Smells pretty nice. And this is what it looks like while it's drying. So I guess he said let it go for about 15 minutes. It's drying right now. Mm -hmm. Since this is a test panel, part of my questions will be, there were some scratches on it, how much is it going to hide, you know, and because fresh paint has those swirls or scratches until you start rubbing it with either a cloth or whatever. So right now there are some, and if we're going to use a product, we want it to be painless, right? So let's just see how it reacts. I'm actually going to take it outside and so I had to get some UV on it and be right back. Let's see. <laughs> you can see the trees. Looks nice. Trees look good. So does it even really need to be outside to get so-called UV curing? Alright, let's see what happens. So while we are waiting for the other panel to get some UV cure, this is a Mustang front bumper. Now I didn't paint this, this is from uh, Mr. Detail, one of the detailing facilities here in the area. And if you look at the paint real closely, the paint is not very good. It's got what looks like a bunch of micro solvent pop and it's pretty hammered. I'm going to show you what that looks like, and it's got a layer of dust on it right now. See this paint, if you look real close. It's got micro right there. Micro solvent popping. It's all over the whole panel. Like whoever painted this did not do a very good job. <laughs> like right there, you can see it. And you can color sand and buff it all you want, but this paint looks pretty thin. You can see more of it right here. It's called, and it's, it looks like it's been pretty much, it looks like it's got some chomp marks from whoever was polishing on it. But you can see it right there, look. <clears throat> That's all micro 
solid thought. So it's not the best finish. Here, you can see it on this, this area. Watch. Go down. Oh, micro solvent popping right, right here. So the question is, because this panel is not that great of a paint job on this panel, my feelings are this. If your paint is not that great, you can try to polish it and buff it out to make it better. But if it's not really in the quality of the paint, you can only get so far on the way it's going to look. Now, can this stuff make it look better? I don't know. But find out. And this time, I'm not going to take it outside. I'm just going to let it apply it here and see what happens. Because sometimes you just can't go outside because, like, for the past couple days, there was no sun. You know, but there's still UV through those clouds. First of all, I gotta make sure all the, the dust is off of it, so I'll do a quick dust down. I'll dust wipe down. And I'm only gonna do it in this area right here. I don't feel like doing the whole panel. It'd be a waste of product at this point. So I'm just gonna clean it up here. I'll do the 50-50 the this side. We'll have no carbonics auto slick. This side right here will have some carbonics auto slick. Let's see. This is clean. <laughs> How much improvement can this panel have, even though it's got bad paint? <laughs> All the uh, potions are not going to necessarily solve what's not in there in the paint. But it can help improve it, and that's what we always want is improvement to make it look better. If it can do it, we'll find out. And if it can't do it, yeah, look at all that. That is not good. If it can't do it, then we'll let this the way it is. Hopefully it can because uh, it's the only way to find out. Sir, so, there you go. So a lot going on in that <laughs> in front of that panel. See all that? That is not good paint. That is like the worst paint. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Okay. Since I really saturated this rag, maybe it's gonna be crusty, but find out that too. Only one to find out is the test. I'm not going to take it to a car away unless I know exactly what it's doing on the test panel. Alright, and right here it just kind of went over a little bit. But we'll give this 15 minutes. I'll go get the other panel. Yeah, that panel. Looks and polish it out. Brought the uh, brought the other panel back. Let's see how it polishes out. Okay. See, I was thinking this would be like a, a wipe with a crust lines, like crusty lines, but it seems to wipe off fairly smooth, which is nice. 
which is pretty darn nice. Looks like it's wiping off Yeah, okay. All right. Yep. The same micro scratches that were there before really didn't get hidden too much because I know that there's some scrapes on here just from playing with this thing. But th it does wipe off real nice, I can tell you that much. It's wiping off. Wipe it off and it's not leaving crusty line streaks. Like you would think it might leave crusty line streaks, but it's not doing that. Okay, that's cool. Get a light on it now and see. Couple areas I missed. You wipe it down a little bit better here. Otherwise it's smoother. Okay, definitely had a slick. Temperature wise, let's see because it was outside. Now, here's the other thing too. Since my hands and my gloves are touching all these things that have product on them, I gotta be careful not to cross contaminate cross contaminate the paint side. Because if I'm using that that light to check this my hands gonna have stuff on there I'm going to, have to remove the coating on there if I use that light for light inspection during painting for color match so you kind of have to make sure that you almost quarantine your detailing products from your painting side otherwise you're gonna get a bunch of fish eyes All right, so now this here got some dry time on it but you know what Let's let's uh, not wait. Let's just see what it looks like. Here. Very minute that I can see the difference. It is glossier than this side, but the same issues with the paint have not disappeared. I still see micro solvent popping because it's in the paint. <laughs> no amount of makeup is gonna correct. Like a solid popping, it's not in there. The paint doesn't have it. But you can see it right here, the difference. It's slightly shinier than this side. Yeah, it's definitely slightly shinier. So have a look at it. It's like everything's getting contaminated with product right now because I'm touching everything. So I'm just going to get rid of these gloves so that my camera's not full of... Um, the auto slick that's just the way uh, you have to approach things when you start having to deal with both detailing side and paint side and I would normally rewash my gloves but um, it would be too risky to have I mean I isolate it for detailing side gloves but right now these are too small for me anyway so I guess this is just had to be used and thrown so it does look nice and smooth and slick there. It does feel nice. This one here, you still got the micro solvent popping issues because that's not going away just from a spray bottle or something. You're not going to be able to hide that. <laughs> mm, this is where there's a slight difference. Yeah, right, right there. If you look, it's very slight. 
this is the outline of where so it did help improve it and how does this feel feels Yeah, it's pretty slick. How does it bead water though? Everybody wants to know what water looks like with beads on it. So let's get some water beading. Interesting. Not really seeing like To the, yeah, there you can see the difference. See right there. See how you can see where it went on right there and where it wasn't on. That's the 50 50. I'm going to wipe it off now with uh, another cloth here. Well, let us use the same cloth. Use the other side. So I can see where there's the auto slick, and then there's no auto slick right there. So what does that really mean in terms of paint finish? Well, I can see that this is not as glossy as the side with the auto slick on it. Now you can see even better. Does look a little shinier. So, hmm. so what's the conclusion of this test? Well, I know it does make it slick. Does make it slick. Let's try some more beading on it. Just to see how it feels. It was raining. Beats pretty good. So that's the conclusion of the test. Get some of that, try it. it does make it shinier. I won't be able to give you the exact amount of percentage of shine but I can tell you it does make it shinier because I can see the difference from here to there as far as the ease of use this is a panel that I not even polished this one I did not polish or whatever I just basically grabbed it from when it was removed from the car at the collision center and uh, when the tech said hey you want this panel I'm like yeah I'll take it it's a Mustang Mustang front bumper be fun to play with and since seeing all the defects on it figure let's just see what we can do with that so that concludes the test 
This is the auto slick. It says it's ceramic spray, super slick, super easy. That's the thing I like is the super easy part. Apply in sun or shade and works on pretty much everything, it says. Works on everything. So, this one, this panel just cleaned it and sprayed on it. This one here had already been polished with the ceramics and then I put this stuff on. So, thanks for watching. Check this out. Get a bottle if you're interested. Uh, but that concludes the test. So, what can I say about it? Well, I can say thank you, Tim, for sending me a bottle of this stuff. I'm going to continue testing with it. And the next test will be to put it underneath the lawnmower to see if the lawnmower can get slicker. Because when the grass is a little bit damp, the grass sticks to the inside of our, our Eagle lawnmower. So, and the Eagle lawnmower is made out of plastic on the inside. So we'll see how this stuff works on it. As far as what I predict that it won't do, it won't keep your paint from rusting. <laughs> Because this is Wisconsin. The salt is not going to... Whatever you put on is not going to keep it from rusting. I know, I got rusty cars. Cars rust from the inside. And I've had cars that didn't rust because the metal is good. So, that new salt is definitely tougher on vehicles. But, there you go. Thanks for watching. So, what I did is just, just wash this. So at least I don't have residue on here for for painting. Don't want any residue of this because if you touch this and you're painting, your hands need to, will be your gloves will have contamination. And then you contaminate the spray gun, you contaminate everything else. You gotta be careful when you're using certain things that are only dedicated to body to to the um, detailing side because it'll have some ceramic set ceramic SiO2 that stuff. And you need to remove that. In order for this to get painted, you gotta remove this stuff first, otherwise it's gonna fish eye. And that's one of the issues we had in the body shop. People putting a bunch of makeup under under paint to make it as glossy as possible. And then you go to paint it and you're gonna get fish eyes on it. So you gotta remove it. There's products out there to help remove it completely. But uh, the main thing is try to avoid contaminating Things that are on the paint side and things that are on the detailing side. You know, you got to really be focused on that. Just like um, if you have an air compressor or if you have a turbine sprayer, you don't want to have anyone using products that can cause fish eyes because it floats in the air. And then when the, the machine sucks in the air, it's going to contaminate all the inside of it. Your hose is going to get contaminated. Next thing you know, you're spraying something and you're basically creating fish eyes somewhere. So just be uh, be conscious of that because fish eyes are not good. So there you go.